You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, Jorgen's Path. So yeah, I'm gonna give you guys another uh, Dawn Chorus episode so very soon. I mean, I'm gonna give you guys, you know, because I already already uploaded a triple kind of a triple episode thing the other day. I'm gonna give you guys another another the Jorgen episode. I'm curious to see where the night goes, if there's any kind of real big difference between, you know, following Jorgen and following Lake. Um, it seems that their paths are pretty closely intertwined together. I'm curious as to where that could lead, though. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy the entertainment for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up. All right, let's go. All right. <clears throat> I carefully inspect my face, looking for anything unfamiliar, but I look the same as ever. My eyes are somewhat bloodshot, but I can't, but I can blame that on the early wake-up. My fangs aren't as long and pointy as Lake's, and I don't have a mane like him. I enjoy having striped fur, though. I don't think I'd trade stripes for a mane. Overall, I'm not that different from him. Like most of the big cats, tigers and lions are quite similar species, similar enough that they can produce offspring together. Well, obviously I couldn't produce offspring with Lake, but... Wait, what the hell am I even thinking about? Even though I'm alone here, I blush involuntarily. <laughs> oh, hold up. But no, Lake is not the one. I can't risk losing him as a friend. Yeah. Shaking these thoughts off as I hit my... As I take off my boxers, I let them fall to the ground. I shouldn't stay here too long doing nothing, or Lake or Jorgen will start to wonder what the hell I'm doing here. I grab the shampoo and conditioner from the bathroom kit and hop into the shower. The water is warm and pleasant. Wasting no time, I open the shampoo, open the shampoo and start rubbing it into my fur, starting with my head. Getting onto the bus this morning, I never would have guessed this day could, have, it could end this way. I thought I'd maybe talk a bit with the others during the meals when, and then walk around some, taking photos outside. Maybe spend some time with Miko, then go to my room to read for a while and go to sleep alone. But now I'm about to sleep next to both Lake and Jorgen, even though I didn't even know one of them this morning. And Lake, we talk together sometimes, but we were never this close before. Maybe I'm overthinking it? Maybe I just happened to be around and he needed someone, just anyone, to comfort him. He has Jorgen here too, though, and I'm sure they're better friends than I am with him. I can still feel his fuzzy head leaning on my shoulder and his warm paw holding onto my waist. I hope to never forget this sensation. In any case, I feel like they both invited me into their worlds, and I'm grateful for that. I don't know if it's the tea that Jorgen gave me or something else, but I feel somewhat lightheaded. I continue with the relaxing ritual until I'm all clean. Then, I open the conditioner and apply it generously, brushing it into my wet fur. It's unbranded, but it smells nice. Now I smell nice, too. Finally I, let, finally, I rinse my whole body again and turn off the water. I step out of the shower and dry myself with a fresh towel, which takes some time when you're all covered in thick feline fur. I finish in a few minutes, plus modern technology for those thick, self, for those thick super absorbing towels, and only now I realize something. I don't have any clean clothes, so I need to put on the same ones from today. Ugh, I wish I had at least a pair of fresh boxers. At least I didn't sweat that much today, and I already took one shower, so it could be worse. I check the t-shirt, but it doesn't really smell of anything yet. Wearing only boxers and my t-shirt for modesty, I open the door and step out of the bathroom. Yeah. Hey, Carvin! Both Lake and Jorgen are sitting on their beds and playing with their phones. The mattress Lake, bo Lake, bo Lake brought for me is waiting for me between their beds, already complete with bedding. The air here is colder than the bathroom, but still comfortable. Apparently the three of us are hot enough to warm up the, pr the room pretty well. Hey, thanks for making the bed for me. You didn't have to, I could have done it myself. No problem. I didn't really have anything else to do. Ooh. Oh god, is the sneeze coming on? Okay, maybe not. Okay. If you're ready, then you can turn off the light and jump in. We're all we're all done. Oh, well, one thing, actually. Uh, do you, any of you have a spare phone charger? If you have a standard port, then I have a spare cable and a charger that can charge up to three phones at once. Sometimes it proves use itself, itself useful. Great. Thank you, Jorgen. Uh, sorry that I'm using you two like this, really. If I had a choice... But you don't, and it's not a problem. I'm only happy to have you here, Carvin. I drop the rest of my clothes on the chair. It doesn't look very elegant, but what else can I do with them? I left the bathroom kit in the bathroom, as I will be using it tomorrow morning, so the only thing left to do is to take out my phone from my trousers and plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. After that, I turn off the light and get into bed like made for me, covering myself up to my neck. The mattress itself is not too soft and not too hard, but it's a bit weird sleeping on the floor, as I can feel the hard wooden panels beneath the softness. 
I'm not going to complain, though. I'm grateful they took me in. Good night, and thanks again. Night, Carvin. Good night, Jorgen. Sleep well. Nope. Okay. Did you set the alarm, Jorgen? I kind of forgot. Yes, I did. Don't worry, I'm going to wake you up even if I have to kick you out of bed. Good, I'll probably need that. <laughs> Sillies. Uh, I think I still have the alarm set since yesterday. What time is it set for? Well, it should start ringing soon. Uh, better turn it off, then. I take my phone and open the alarm app, but it turns out that this time I set the alarm... I didn't... This time I didn't set the alarm to recurring. Okay, crisis averted. It's silent again for a moment before Lake speaks up again. I wonder, how would it feel to be a different animal? What? Why? I mean, that was really sudden. What's the context here? I was just thinking about some stuff. Looking at the moon, I've thought about how we're only one... How we're only getting one shot at this life. Don't you think it's pretty unfair? There's so much I want to do and see, and if I don't cram it all into my short feline life, I'll never ever get another chance to do it. So, I was thinking about reincarnation. I feel like that would be much fairer than just, you know, not existing. We will stay silent for some time. So after a pause, Lake just continues. The universe should be fair, so I think that it's a logical conclusion. And I really like the idea. Not only do you get another chance, but also whatever whatever good or bad you did in your life actually matters, and according to that, and according to that, the next life you get is better or worse. The idea is tempting, I have to admit. How would it work, though? There would be either have to be a limited number of souls, or the new one would have to be created whenever there are more living creatures than souls available. And then there would be not then there would not be enough bodies. What would happen to the souls waiting to be reincarnated? Those are just technical problems. If you can't remember your previous life, would that really be you? What would really constitute you, then? Just the consciousness, or who you are, your character, your wants, your accomplishments, what you own, and who do you know? Where would you put the boundary of a person? Who would st what Would you still be you if you had no recollection of the past whatsoever? Would your previous life still matter in that case? Or would you be unfairly punished or rewarded for actions of someone you can't even remember nor relate to in any way? I don't know, frankly. I guess that as long as you would still have my as I would still have my consciousness, then I am happy. Consciousness can be switched on and off like a switch, with a few electrodes or, or something as simple as fainting. You know, it's just nice existing. I like existing. When you think that everything around you and you yourself would disappear and it would stay like that forever? Life is rough sometimes, but there are things I enjoy, and friends I want to keep close, and I don't want to have to let, it go, let go of it someday. I think it would be harder to find some purpose in life if you just kept on living forever. Living one life after another, that sounds like Sisyphus's toil to me. Living the best life you can isn't a very good goal when you can't learn from experience you gain in previous lives. I don't know, maybe there's some higher purpose and we will just never know it until the end. We don't know that, though, and I think it's better to find your own purpose in life before then. Or better, accept the possibility that there is no, that there's simply no such thing. Personally, I believe it's an error to think that there isn't, that, that if there's no predetermined purpose in life, then there is no meaning to life at all. I rather choose to think of life as a gift, and the purpose and meaning is, and the purpose and meaning in it is for us to create. Maybe, maybe I should just enjoy the ride while it lasts. Be thankful that I got to be here at all, and all that. But it's not easy. I don't like the sense of finality that permeates everything. If there's no meaning in all this, then why are we even here? Meaning is exactly where you put it. It makes it no less real. Some people find it, find it in a quiet family life, others in fighting for a better tomorrow. Some in making art for themselves or for others, and some are simply content to explore whatever art is being produced. In a way, we don't really find whatever meaning is. We make it. Hmm. Are you feeling better now? A bit, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, when you got three people in a room, you're probably going to start talking. Or banging. One of those two. My consciousness comes and goes in waves. I can feel something warm and pulsating just at the edge of my thoughts, but I try to grasp it. When I try to... But, ooh, excuse me. But as I try to grasp it, it dissipates. Where am I? Uh-oh. The moon is illuminating the room with a silver glow. The shadows it casts on the wall seem to move, mingling and morphing. A dark figure walks across the room quietly, a maimed one. It shoots me a quick look before continuing to the door. I try to comprehend what I'm seeing, but another dream washes over my mind like a wave, 
pulling me back into the formless sea. Lake's got a rendezvous, and everyone thinks it's with Torolf. Kinda gotta agree with that. Those two are kinda close. Carvin! Carvin? Hey, come back to us! My thoughts branch out chaotically and then fade into oblivion, like a like lightning, like a lightning in slow motion. It's Lake! Lake? Why is there a lake hanging above me? What's going on? Rise and shine, Carvin. It's morning already. Morning? It cannot be morning. I feel half dead. Well, sort of. I think the sun is rising right now. Ah, I'm at Lake's room. He and Jorgen invited me to stay with them after stargazing yesterday. What hour is it? 6.40. Only 20 minutes left until breakfast. Oh, that's not much. I rub my eyes, feeling the life returning to my limbs. And give me a moment. I need to wake up first. I groan loudly and stretch out. I check every muscle, readying it for the whole for the whole long day ahead of us. Ugh, getting up is the last thing I'd like to do now. The battle against bed gravity is vicious, but I finally emerge victorious. Although, as soon as I'm on my paws, an overwhelming urge to crawl back under the duvet overcomes me. You're up! Good! I was beginning to think I'd have to fetch a bucket of water for you. Don't you dare. Ever! Unless you have a death wish. Also, I was sure we would have to wake, wake you up, not the other way around. A dream I had woke me up. Then I remembered about the trip today and got so excited I couldn't go back to sleep. Besides, it's already somewhere, somewhere somewhat late. Jorgen is already in the bathroom. I'll go after him. Unless you want to go first, that is. You can go. I need a moment. What were you dreaming about that it woke you up? Oh, you were in that dream, actually. We were exploring some town together. It had to some thin but monstrously tall glass towers, looking like something straight out of a sci-fi novel, and several small rivers were flowing through it. I remember we went to a bakery to grab something to eat. They had delicious-looking blueberry pies and carrot cakes and some apple cakes like the ones from yesterday, too. That sounds... rather nice. Hold up. That is weird coincidence. I've had this recurring dream for a long time now. Where... It's like an, I'm in an aerial perspective, and I'm looking at these tall towers. There's like a row of... It's like a row of three of them on each side of this long canyon. And they look to either be made of glass or silver. I can't tell from the distance. Hold up. That's kind of a weird coincidence, huh? Huh. I wonder if anyone else dreams of tall glass towers. Uh -huh tall glass towers overlooking a canyon or a river. Hmm. That's... weird. Sorry, that gave me pause. That sounds rather nice. Not like something that... that well, not like something that would wake me up. Hmm. Good morning. Morning! Huh. I can't say with full certainty as Jorgen is partially obscuring them with his arms, but are those top sur... are these... are these top surgery scars? Hey! Can I take the bathroom now? Go ahead. I'm all done. It's really weird seeing you up before eight. Are you feeling all right? Never been better. Carvin, did you give him something? Me? No. Jorgen dresses up quickly and rather gracefully, again in all black clothes. Okay, I'll make it quick. We have to go out soon. Good morning to you too, Carvin. I hope you slept well. No lion snoring keeping you up at night? Thankfully, no. Sleeping on the floor was surprisingly comfortable too. I was afraid I'd wake up my back with my back killing me, but no, it was no worse than sleeping in a bed. You want some hibiscus tea before breakfast, maybe? There's still some left over from yesterday evening. Sure, I could use some. It was really tasty after you diluted it a bit. Jurgen goes off to pour us both some leftover tea, and I move to and I move to check the window to check the weather. The gray, heavy sky is barely illuminated by the sun, still hidden behind the horizon. It's snowing heavily, so much that the falling flakes obscure the view of the mountains. The ground is completely covered in snow, too. It must have been snowing for the entire night. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Jorgen sits down on the edge of Lake's bed with his cup, so I do the same, taking a spot next to him. I take a sip of the tea. Jorgen diluted it with hot water so it's pleasantly warm. This time familiar with the taste, I don't need any sugar to help gulp it down. Jorgen sips his tea slowly and quietly, looking out the window, or perhaps not looking anywhere in particular, just lost in thoughts. Must be really cold outside. I hope the snowfall settles before we reach town. 
This much makes it mu this much makes it much harder to take any photos. Oh, okay. The cup warms in my paws nicely. I never would have guessed Jorgen is trans, or maybe he isn't. I'm as assuming too much. I don't have any trans friends in the uni or from high school that I know of. This is all a bit new to me. I don't think I should ask about it unless he mentions it first, though. I've been reading about near-death experiences recently. Hmm? What kind? I mean the out-of-body, tunnels of light, full-on hallucinations kind of thing. People claiming they died, were separated from their bodies, and then came back, and how it changed their lives. And what do you think of it? I think it's ironic that they needed to almost die to appreciate living. Those who actually die never get that chance. Maybe it's good to experience something like that at some point in your life. Maybe not. I'm not a psychologist. I can only draw conclusions from what I read and compared with my own experience of reality and the stories of others. Did you experience something like that? In a way, but not really. I've had a few situations in which I was in some serious danger, but that's not the same. None of these changed my life much. At most, maybe I got a bit angrier. Oh. Why angrier? What happened? You know, the one thing that really irks me is injustice. It's endlessly frustrating that bad deeds can go unpunished. But that's how life is. Sometimes there's nothing you can do other than accept your situation and move on. The milky glow of the dispersed sunlight reflects in Jorgen's glasses as he turns his head to look outside again. That ended on a somber note, sorry. That wasn't my intention when I started the conversation. What I meant to say is that it's good to learn to appreciate life while we're living. I nod and sip the tea again. It's still bitter, but I don't mind. What about you? Ever been close to death? No, thankfully not. I've been leading a peaceful life so far. Not that many dangers out there in the Finnish wilds. Well, unless you drink too much and drown in a lake, but I've never been that much into drinking. Good. <laughs> my, my, what a foggy morning. It's so dark here. How much time do we have left? Fifteen minutes. We still have a moment. That's good, because I just remembered something. Carvin, you have your instant camera with you, right? Yeah. Why? You were supposed to show me some more photos. Do you have any with you now? Oh, not really. Just the one I took yesterday and showed you at lunch. Ah. Can I see the camera itself? I love the vibe that instant cameras have. Uh, sure thing. If you want, I could take a picture of you. <gasps> really? Carvin, that'd be so cool! You're the best! Wow, now, that's some enthusiasm. That's not a big it's, that's not a big thing. Just tell me what kind of photo you would like. Anything works, really. Just I'll just be happy to have one. Okay, there's not much light here yet, so you'd have to face the window and I'll stand here. Let me get dressed first, okay? Ah, right. Wow, he's flustered and he's wow, flustered. He's even cuter. Blake goes away to dress himself, and I take the camera out of my bag. But turning it on, I see something shiny on the bottom of the bag where the camera was. Huh. At the bottom of the bag, there's the key to my room. I... I think I found the key. The key to your room? Y yes. And I had it with me this whole time. That's good. You can retrieve your belongings now. Why would I put the key there, though? I must have been really out of it yesterday morning. Wow, what a stupid situation. You can stay here if you prefer that, of course. I got the matches for the rest of the trip anyway. Right, Jorgen? Sure. I don't mind. You guys are really are you guys really are the best. I pull them both for a hug, snuggling into myself snuggling into myself closely. Neither of them protest or try to wriggle out, and Lake wraps an arm around my back in return. Thank you. No problem, dude. We're happy to have you here. Oh, the photo! I almost forgot about it. I grabbed the I grabbed the camera from the table and pointed at Lake. Ready? Shoot! I grabbed the milky white photo and pulled it from the camera, putting it in a putting it in a compartment in my bag. Why are you hiding it? I wanted to see. It needs a few minutes to develop. There's nothing on it yet, and I have to shield it from light. Right now, the film is still sensitive to light. Let the chemicals work. You'll see it at breakfast. Not to be a buzzkill, but we have less than ten minutes to breakfast now. I'll go wash myself then, and don't wait for me if I don't wait for me if I'll be late. Of course we'll wait. Speak for yourself. I want my morning coffee. Okay, I'm going. I'll make it quick. <laughs> Bunch of sillies. Somehow we made it to the cafeteria exactly in time. It's emptier than I would have thought it would be, though. Jorgen went straight to the espresso machine to make himself a coffee, while Lake and I went ahead to find a table for us. In the middle of the cafeteria stands Rune and Miko, the former looking somewhat lost. Hey, morning! Hello there, morning! Good morning, Carvin. Oh, hello. Good morning, you two. You guys feeling alright? You look like you came here and then forgot why. Oh, I know I'm here to eat. I'm waiting for Rune to make up his mind on where to visit. 
know where to sit. Sorry, I didn't get much sleep. I'm still feeling rather woozy. Waiting for the matcha to kick in. Ah, oh, that's not good. Why are you standing in the middle of the room, though? I expected Devin to be already, but he isn't. Maybe he got caught up in some faculty stuff. For sure, he's all, for sure he's up already. It's an, he's an early bird. Would you like to sit with us in the meantime? We could save him a spot at the table. Good idea. We could sit like yesterday at dinner, joining two tables. Rude and I each grab one table and join it with the other, carefully as the other tables, carefully as the tables are already set. Then I sit down next to Lake while Rune and Miko take the spots opposite to us. Morning, guys. Hello. Why are you all so quiet? Excuse me, coming through. Oh, it's you two. Are you joining us? I'm right, gonna pause it right there. That's been another episode. It's not much different so far from uh, Lake's route. Uh, guys, if there's anything else I can do to get some more private stuff with uh, Jorgen, please let me know. I wonder if, or I wonder if that really doesn't come into play until after uh, his friend shows up. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next time, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!